Very good. Okay, so let's start. I didn't, so qu question number one, the hot questions. I didn't fully understand the difference between ability eye and trade eye. Could you please clarify? Well, there are many differences. Um, the, the fundamental difference, I guess you could say, is that ability eye sees emotional intelligence uh, as another factor of IQ, much like you have, say, a spatial intelligence or, or vocabulary size or uh, memory size. Uh, so you also have an emotional ability, which the trait AI sees it as uh, primarily a personality trait. Uh, so that's a fundamental difference. There are other differences as well. You, I would refer you to the, uh, to the lecture where these are mentioned. And also, so this is my website, the research website for trait AI. If you go to publications, you get a list of the publications and if you scroll down to 2011, I think it is. Uh, yep, so there is this one. Ability and trait emotional intelligence is a huge chapter on the differences between ability AI and trait AI. So you can check that as well for details if you want. But uh, most of the central stuff I uh, shared in the lecture and also mentioned now this big fundamental difference of either seeing AI as, as a specific part of IQ or seeing it as part of the broader personality domain. That's uh, a very important theoretical difference with practical implications. So may we go back to the uh, to our little list. Yep. Second question from the lectures. I understand that Trillia has no disadvantages apart from being subjective. Uh, being subjective is not a disadvantage. Actually, you know, it's a major advantage, not a disadvantage. Uh, would you say this is a stronger construct of intelligence compared to others? Oh, so that's one question. I don't know what you mean by stronger construct of intelligence. I don't know what this means, but certainly I would say that being subjective is not a disadvantage, a major advantage of the theory. I mean, the whole of psychology is, is subjective, if you actually uh, get down to it and analyze it. So the idea that there's some objective reality outside of your mind uh, cannot be supported, I'm afraid. Um, could you please explain why being falsifiable is an advantage of trait AI? Now, this goes back to last week or you know the previous two lectures whenever we had them and remember from the scientific perspective we had mentioned it is important for a theory any theory to straight the eye just is is one theory but there are others but from the perspective of the scientific method it is important for a theory to uh, to be falsifiable in other words it is important that there be empirical ways in which a theory can be shown to be wrong from the perspective of the scientific method because if there's no empirical evidence, if there's no data that can uh, um, disqualify, invalidate a theory, then that theory from the perspective of a scientific method is not particularly useful. That's all the discussion that we had in lecture number four, I think we had discussed all this, the, the necessity uh, from the perspective of the scientific method, I keep reiterating, for a theory to be falsifiable, to be able to disprove a theory. So, yes, so if straight AI is a falsifiable theory, then it, that's an advantage from the perspective of the scientific method. But that's not only specific to straight AI, obviously. It applies to all theories that uh, uh, attempt or, or endeavor to be scientific. You mentioned that part of straight AI includes the perception of the capacity, that is, ability AI. Mm -hmm. If this is the case, trait AI and ability AI should be correlated. Thus, if ability AI is postulated to be correlated with IQ, would trait AI would also? Thus, if ability AI is postulated to be correlated with IQ, would trait AI also be correlated with IQ rather than being orthogonal? Well, there's a very small correlation between positive correlation between trait AI uh, and and IQ. Uh, so. Yes, but it really depends on you know what we orthogonal. We mean like uncorrelated, generally uncorrelated. But there is a small correlation as there is a small correlation between all positive um, psychological attributes, as I discussed in other uh, publications. But yes, like strictly speaking, yes, there is a small correlation, but it's very small between uh, IQ and trait. Yeah, small positive correlation. 
Hello. In terms of the validity of Ability I, could you re-explain low incremental validity? I'm afraid I don't quite understand. Um, on the question of incremental validity, okay, well, incremental validity means if we have a new construct, if we introduce a new construct, say trait emotional intelligence or, or ability emotional intelligence or alexithymia, any new construct that we, that we introduce, then the question might arise, okay, does this new construct predict anything over and above the constructs that we already have available? Okay, so if, for example, I'm trying to predict a criterion like depression, whether somebody will, the likelihood of somebody getting depressed, okay, and I say, okay, well, I have this new construct that's called alexithymia, which is the ability to identify your feelings, okay? Now, somebody might ask, is this construct really necessary? I mean, does it predict, say, depression or any other criterion over and above, for example, the big five? Okay. And if it does predict, then this is evidence of incremental validity. In other words, uh, that it has validity, has predictive power over and above the constructs that are already available to us. That's what incremental uh, validity means. So when we say for ability I that the evidence of incremental validity is fairly low, it means that you know, there's not a lot of strong evidence showing that this construct of, of ability I predicts criteria over and above the constructs that are already available to us, particularly IQ and uh, uh, personality in the form of the big five. 